Elimination method solving a linear system by subtracting lesson 8.3b. For a system of equations, if both equations contain the same variable term, we can solve by subtracting. So if you look at this system, we have 2x and a 2x. They have the same variable term. We can solve this with subtraction. For this one, we would use addition because we have learned that there are opposite variable terms right here. We have a plus 4y and a minus 4y. Since they're opposites, we would use addition. So these are the steps for the elimination method. We're going to add or subtract. Remember, we add if the variable terms are opposites. We subtract if they have the same variable term. So we add or subtract the equations to eliminate one variable. Second thing we do is solve the resulting equation for the other variable. Then we substitute that value of the variable into either equation to find the value of the remaining variable that was eliminated back in step one. So here it's telling us to solve the system of equations by subtracting. Let's take a look at our system. We have 2x plus y is equal to 8 and 2x plus 3y is equal to 4. So right away we can see both equations have 2x, so it does make sense to use subtraction. Remember, when they have the same variable term, that's when we're going to use subtraction. And we have a 2x minus a 2x, which makes a 0, so that's gone. And we have y minus 3y, that gives us a negative 2y, and 8 minus 4 is 4. Now we divide both sides by the coefficient negative 2. We have negative 2 over negative 2, same numerator and denominator, that makes 1y. And we have 4 divided by negative 2, which gives us a negative 2. We know y is equal to negative 2. Now we just pick one of these equations, I pick the first one, to substitute negative 2 for y. And we have 2x minus 2 is equal to 8. We can get rid of this minus 2 by adding 2 to each side. That's going to create a 0 pair here and eliminate it. Now we have 2x is equal to 10. 8 plus 2 is 10. We divide by the coefficient 2 on each side. Same numerator and denominator, so we get 1x. And on this side, 10 divided by 2 is 5. We know x is equal to 5. So the solution as an ordered pair is 5 for x, negative 2 for y. We can check our solution by graphing to see where the lines of the two equations intersect. The solution we came up with was 5 for x, negative 2 for y. What we do is we take this equation to find the x-intercept. We set y to equal 0. If we're looking for x, we set y to be 0. If we're looking for y, we set x to be 0. We get 2x plus 0 is equal to 8, which is really just 2x equals 8. We divide both sides by this coefficient 2, and we divide this side by 2, and we get that the x-intercept is 4. For the y-intercept, we set the x to 0, and that'll give us 0 plus y equals 8, which means the y-intercept is 8. That's the y-intercept b. For this equation, we're looking for the x-intercept. We set y to 0. That's going to give us 2x is equal to 4. We divide both sides by the coefficient 2 and get that the x-intercept is 2. That's where it's going to cross the x-axis. For the y-intercept, we set x to 0. So we really just have 3y equals 4. We divide both sides by this coefficient 3, and we get 4 thirds, which can simplify to 1 and 1 third as our y-intercept. Now that we know this equation has an x-intercept of 4 and y of 8, and this one has an x-intercept of 2 and y is 1 and 1 third, we can graph the lines. So here we've graphed our first equation. We know the point where it crosses the x-axis, the x-intercept is a 4. We know the y-intercept is an 8, and we use a straight edge to draw the line. For our second equation, we know the x-intercept is a 2, and the y-intercept b is 1 and 1 third. So we take a straight edge and draw the line. Now the graphs of the equations do intersect at 5, negative 2, but graphing the second equation whose y-intercept b is 1 and 1 third may be difficult. 
If our paper is large enough, we could use three units to represent one, so one of the units would be one-third, but it's more accurate to check our solution by substituting the x and y value of our solution into each equation to see if they're true. So here we have our system of equations and the solution we came up with, substituting our solution into the system to check for accuracy, we get 2 times 5 minus 2 is equal to 8. Well, that's 10 minus 2, which is equal to 8. So yes, that's true. And when we substitute it into the second equation, we get 2 times 5 minus 6. We've got a positive 3 times a negative 2, which is going to give us a minus 6. So we have 2 times 5 minus 6 equals 4. Well, that would be 10 minus 6 equals 4. Yes, that's true. Substituting is a lot more accurate for checking. So remember, to find the x-intercept, that's where the graph line crosses the x-axis, we set the y-value in the equation to 0. To find the x-intercept, we set the y-value to be 0. That way, we get 4x is equal to 18. We divide both sides by the coefficient 4. That's going to give us our x-intercept is 4 and 5 tenths for this equation. Then, for this equation, to find the y-intercept b, we can rewrite the equation into slope-intercept form or set the x value to 0. So 4x plus 3y equals 18 will be 4 times 0 plus 3y equals 18. So we don't need to use this. It's just 4 times 0 is 0. That means we have 3y is equal to 18. We divide both sides by the coefficient 3 and get that the y-intercept b is 6 for this equation. That's where the graphed line crosses the y-axis. Now I wanted to show you something. This is looking ahead in algebra for things that are coming up. This is the standard form of an equation. We have a, the variable x, plus b, the variable y, plus c is equal to 0. And a, b, c represent some integer, some number. So the standard form of an equation can be written like this or the way we've been using equations in the last couple of videos, ax plus by is equal to c. That would be like 2x plus 3y is equal to 4. That is considered the standard form of an equation. It's not set to equal 0, but we can set it to equal 0. So be careful because the definition of the standard form of an equation is not the same in all textbooks. But this way or this way is considered acceptable for the standard form. Now, if we take this equation and using properties of equality, in this case we would subtract 4 from each side, we can write an equa this equation into this other way, that it's equal to 0. By subtracting 4 from each side because it says it equals 4, if we take that 4 away, we can move it over to this side of the equal sign and set it to equal 0. Either way, x and y will represent the same values no matter which equation you solve. I want you also to be careful when adding or subtracting integers. When we're stacking them and we've got negative and positive integers, we have to be careful. Remember the rules. We learned back in seventh grade in chapter one that when we're adding like signs, we just add like the add-ins. If we're adding a positive and a positive, it's positive, of course. But if we're adding a negative and a negative, it's going to be a negative. So if we're adding a negative 2 and a negative 4, we're going to get a negative 6. And I'm going to have a link to the 7th grade math video 1.2c, short video that you can watch to refresh your memory. Also in that video is adding different signs. We find the difference absolutely. We're adding a 7 plus a negative 2. We add by finding their absolute difference, and 7 minus 2, that would be the difference, is a 5, then 7 plus negative 2 is equal to 5. And when we subtract negatives, we add the opposite. If we have a 5 and we're subtracting a negative 3, we add 3. We have 5 plus 3 is 8, and I'm going to have a link to the 7th grade math video 1.3c 
that can remind you of this, and that will be in the description. Okay, we're finished with part B. We're moving on to the last part, C, solving word problems with systems of equations. Remember, if we have the same variable term, these are both positive 2x, then we use subtraction. If we have opposites, like a plus 4y minus 4y, we would use addition. I hope you're doing well, and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.